All right, ho, 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 welcome to episode 50 of the Patty and the Yank podcast. Feels like we've been gone for a while, but baby, we are back. Patty, how you feeling today? It was Christmas Eve, babe, and the drunk tank, an old man said to me. I don't remember the rest of the song. <laughs> I don't even know the song. That, only the greatest Christmas song ever written. By the Pogues, fairy tale of New York. The Pogues, the man. Have you don't ever... embarrass yourself. The Pogues are <laughs> fucking phenomenal. They've got a song called "A Pair of Brown Eyes." Oh man, it just hits pulls on your heartstrings. But anyways, yeah, they wrote the fairy tale of New York. It's fucking brilliant. The Pogues is a is an American band, I, American punk rock band. Oh my god. The po- <laughs> All right, I'll, t- I'll tell you something. Right, All right. So the Pogues. For anybody that's listening out there, that's from Ireland or probably England, they know who the Pogues are. Pogue Mahone is what they used to call themselves, or Pogue Mahones. And that means, in Gaelic, in our language, Irish, kiss my ass. So they were called kiss my ass first, and then people were like, you can't have a band called kiss my ass. So they changed it to the Pogues, which means the kisses. So it's Gaelic. So I wonder Post Malone, isn't he a rapper? He got his name from Pogue Malone. <laughs> Who's Pogue Malone? He's just like a lone... Post Malone. Malone. Pogue Malone was like a, like one of the Pogues that got kicked out of the band, I guess, and he's like alone, and then he's like, hang on a second, I can I can run with this. All right, I'm done talking, Yank. Sweet. All right, cool. So, uh, Merry Christmas, motherfuckers. Sorry for the swearing. But, uh, all right, today we're talking about Christmas, and I think it's going to be pretty multifaceted, but we're going to be talking about the history and the origins, and we brought a dear friend Jeremy on to talk about it. So, Jeremy, how are you doing today? Most excellent. Most excellent. Beautiful. I, like Bill and I gotta say Party on. <laughs> Party on Bill. I gotta say, you were asking Patty about his holiday spirit. And I was thinking, man, if it wasn't cold, I wouldn't be able to feel like it's Christmas. Um yeah, I agree. I mean, when I think of Christmas, when the weather starts to get that bit cooler, like around October, you know, Halloween after Halloween, you start to get that Christmas feeling starts to creep into you. But I spent Christmas in Australia before and it was a very different feeling because it was red hot. And it's like we went around somebody's house for a barbecue and then we went to the beach. And it was like, <laughs> this isn't like Christmas at all. Now it was still good, but you're asking me how my Christmas spirit is. I'll tell you, it's very good. And I got a little something for both you guys here. It's a very little something, but it's a taste of Ireland for Christmas. This is a, this is a, a chocolate sweet called an emerald. Anyone in Ireland can probably instantly picture what I'm giving the guys here. They're both Americans, so they've probably never eaten one of these before. So this is a candy we would eat year-round, but at Christmas, uh, candies are very popular in Ireland. Like, they get, we get tins of roses. It's a type of sweet. And in these tins of roses by Cadbury's, you know them? I do. I know Cadbury eggs and oh, the Cadbury chocolate. Okay, cool. And, yeah. so the, at, at home in Ireland, you would buy a tin before Christmas, and then you'd buy a tin of Celebrations, which is like mini Mars bars, mini Milky Ways, mini Twixes. And then you have another one from England, I think, called Quality Street. And in everyone's house, like they'd have tins of these sweets there. So yeah, here's an emerald. Eat them right now, you sons of bitches. During so, the podcast? So, yeah, these two Yanks are going to try an emerald okay. for the first All time. Right. An Irish sweet, chocolate right, let's sweet. let's have it. I do like, what was that one podcast? You probably don't remember. I don't remember. Is that the previous studio where we each... I was taking chocolates because I was like, man, I feel like I'm getting a buzz off chocolates. <laughs> I, need, I want a little boost for the podcast. <laughs> I, think, I was like, try one of these, Patty. <laughs> it's giving me a pick me up. <laughs> yeah, is it a little bit of leprechaun like magic in this? Healthy What's cocaine. So- there is. There is. After you eat this, you might start to sound like me a little bit. Dude, I wish I got like a psychedelic high off this chocolate. <laughs> Legend has it that he whosoever eats the, the emerald, the magic emerald before Christmas shall... Something happened. And, um, I'm sorry, we're chewing now. <laughs> but, that's a big part of it. Yeah. yeah. It's something I just learned about the emerald. Really? But, um, it's chewy, kind of nougat. Yeah. What else are you feeling in there? Caramel. I looked at the pa- at the package first, though, the chocolate caramel. I couldn't read a word of it. <laughs> <laughs> but there you go, that's a real Irish... Sweet it's stuck to my teeth. Mmm. Mm. Thank you much. Talking to the microphone, yeah, motherfucker. Right. You're welcome much. Cool. Uh, yeah. I would like some psychedelic hues of this chocolate. That would be pretty damn cool. And speaking of psychedelics, I think that's kind of what we're jumping into because um, 
Jeremy, I met you recently. It's true. <laughs> and Jeremy's, Jeremy's a man of few words. <laughs> and um, I think we started talking about Christmas, and I can't remember if I was bringing it up to you or you were bringing it up to me. But either way, it was extremely new information. We were talking about the a certain mushroom. The, oh, yeah, the Amanita. Yeah, yeah, Amanita muscaria. And I was telling you that we did a podcast about them. And in that podcast, we talked about Siberian rain, uh, reindeer pee. Right. And, and still one of my favorite episodes of the podcast. Still one of my favorite episodes. And the title is brilliant. Whoever came up with that title, Siberian Psychedelic Siberian Reindeer Pee, should get a fucking Oscar. <laughs> you should get a medal. <laughs> Whoever that was. You should get a green heart. <laughs> um which is crazy, and maybe some of our listeners don't remember that podcast, but in that podcast, the uh, Siberians, or the reindeer, will eat these Amanita mushrooms, which we'll get into in a second, and then they're psychedelic. I don't know if humans can eat them, but when they pee, their pee is psychoactive, and then the Siberian nomads would like drink the pee to get high. Then the reindeers would even drink their own pee, I think. I wonder if they peed into each other's mouths. I think it's involving the old adage about eating the yellow snow. Really? You know, this this would be the one time where you do eat the yellow snow. <laughs> oh, point. because this is in Siberia, right? Oh, and how else would you eat the pea? They're following the reindeer because the reindeer can find the mushrooms under the snow. They can still smell them. Whoa, so they so they follow... Oh, kind of like... Well, I guess Santa didn't follow the reindeer. The reindeer pulled him, right? Yeah, the reindeer pulled Santa, which could be a metaphor for the reindeer bringing us uh, Santa, which is the mushroom. Because we should probably rewind and start at the beginning. Um, where does the whole Santa, his suit, his bag, and the reindeer, where did all these things start? So we got to imagine uh, this kind of climate and lifestyle going on in Siberia. It's like what you'd find in northern Scandinavia or something. They're, they're nomadic people wearing animal skins, living in you know subarctic and arctic environments. And they don't have any way to brew alcohol uh, traditionally. So that would be in the winter time when it's dark and cold. And you imagine in the in the far north, it could be dark for you know for most of the day. And in the winter time, there's a need to maybe celebrate or to alleviate that in some way. So there was a culture supposedly of uh, shamans, like mushroom shamans. For each community, would have a guy who would go and get these. And deliver them as part of the the you know the midwinter celebration would deliver uh, these mushrooms that they could not make to a- cut you off. But what you're telling me is that fucking Santa used to bring magic mushrooms. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. That's the the symbol of Santa seems to be about this taken from uh, you know a mushroom shaman from from the far north. That's unreal. That's brilliant. <laughs> So Santa has to go out and follow the reindeer to find the mushrooms. And they grow uh, symbiotically with the roots of certain trees. They don't just grow out in the open. So you have to find like pine trees or birch trees. And and where there's a stand of them, then maybe around the base, you know, where the presents go, you would find uh, these mushrooms. But if they're under the snow, then the reindeer have to dig it out so what you're telling me now is that a christmas tree in a house with presents underneath it is taken from a pine tree in the wild with fucking beautiful magic mushrooms growing underneath it you got it what the so the mushroom in case you haven't pictured it in your mind is like oh, i'm picturing it it's red <laughs> it's a red cap with a lot of white spots and it's you've seen it probably in mostly in super mario yep when he gets he gets big you know, or perceives himself to be larger, yep. which is one of the effects of the, the Amanita. Oh, man, that's crazy to think that a Mario Brothers could also have um, influence from mushrooms oh. or psychedelics. I, I think it's more crazy to doubt it. I mean, <laughs> play Mario again now and see how many mushrooms there are and how psychedelic the whole thing is. Uh, I think it makes perfect sense. Oh, man, that's crazy. Makes me think about Silicon Valley and how they all go to Burning Man to get their inspiration for like future technologies. Sure, yeah. sure. It's it seems like part of this similar tradition of, you know, needing to to have a break and a festive time uh, where you rest and and uh, you know maybe challenge yourself in other ways. 
And so how long ago would that have been, like that tradition of the shaman going around? In I guess we could call it pre-modern, you know, but maybe in some places it still goes on. Um, it's equivalent to like Eskimo culture in North America. Okay. You, you know, there's the people, there's still people in the far north of these countries living, mm. um, living that way. And Amanita is not illegal um, to, to collect or possess yeah. in, in most of the world. Huh. Um, the, the, it is supposedly not for human consumption. <laughs> uh, according to most governments, it's like, well, if you take it, you could die, right? Okay. You could you could be killed, but uh, that, there's there are no instances of that in you know the last hundred years or so. So that uh, I know of. I'm reading this book called Breaking Open the Head, um, which got its title from taking ibogaine in Central Africa and Gab- Gabon. But uh, one thing they talk about. Oh my God! Did a religious use, lose my train of thought? Oh, is the Amanita mushrooms and how they they can be lethal, right? Well, that's I think more likely it's a, it's a way of referencing the experience that you can have um, with sufficiently potent Amanitas, which is the belief and the experience of dying. So that's that's the psychedelic effect of the mushroom, like the ego. Death. You believe you will die. And you, you go through that process of laying down, believing that you the mushrooms poisoned you or it's going to kill you or something like that. And, and, and it's, it's bizarre because you're very convinced of it. You know, even though you don't, I didn't feel sick in my body. I didn't feel, I wasn't throwing up. I actually felt very comfortable. While you're my taking pain the was gone. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the pain is gone. I usually gone, freak out when I take mushrooms as it is. So well, never, gotta, never mind thinking I'm going to die when I It's a very different, it. yeah, so it's worth mentioning. Uh, it's a very different kind of effect than like um, the psilocybin kind of mushrooms. You Did know, you take you the get. Amanitas? A few times. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Holy shit, I don't absolutely. think I've ever met anybody that's taken them. Yeah, well, I was on a quest and looking for, uh, you know, looking for answers, looking for insight, I guess, and, and the Amanita came up, and, and I found, generally speaking, it's much more meditational uh, and and calm than, than other mushrooms I've had. I, it was the opposite. On, on uh, magic mushrooms, you know, I'd often feel very uncomfortable in, in my body, hot and cold and sick and well and all yeah. this, and very and sort of... You know, it was a challenge to go through, like an yeah. ordeal. Uh, but there were a lot of visuals. Huh. With the Amanita, I didn't have any visuals at any time. Really? But I felt extremely relaxed in my body. Uh, and there, it also makes you blind in a way. You know, that it's, it's a certain kind of blindness where you, your eyes will only focus on a distance about 18 inches in front of your face. That's mad. And everything beyond that is is blurred out, out of focus. And everything inside of that is out of focus. And it wouldn't matter, you know, I wear glasses. Yeah. And it wouldn't matter if I had them on or off or what. It made no difference. I'm trying and to, you're just I'm trying at to, this point. I'm trying to visualize that in my head, just being able to see like 18 It's kind of like if you have a, you know, if you used a camera yeah. and, and you're moving the focus around and it's yeah. the kind of camera that doesn't have a lot of depth of field, yeah. then you can see that, you know, how, how things get blurry. Um, so if you had something 18 inches away, then then you'd see some, you'd see it clearly. But That's otherwise, mad. and wh- where where did you take the mushrooms? Oh, you know, I, I I thought about you know exploring something like this without a, you know a guide. Yeah. I wanted to create a very calm environment, so I did it at home um, with just a couple close friends. Huh. And had food in the kitchen, and you know, closed all the you were draperies. Prepared. You prepped. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. No <laughs> one was coming the whole weekend. And, That's not you know, a bad idea, huh? Yeah, I had water, and you know, yeah, you had a good prep time for, for a journey. But it wasn't like I wanted a lot of stimulation. I wasn't going to go to a party. You know, yeah. la- sounds started to seem very loud. It's a lot of it is relating to sound. So a lot of the the hallucinations that people report, or I use the word hallucinations because that's our conventional way of speaking, but yeah. I I feel more like it's sort of input or information from the mushroom. You know, you're getting some communication from that. So it's auditory, and people have this experience of of speaking to God or speaking to some kind of higher entity or something. entity, yeah, that has great wisdom and knowledge far beyond. Huh. Our own awareness. Do you think after taking these, what do you call them again? Ama, Amanita. Amanita mushrooms. Do you think? What's what's the whole name? Do you know? Uh, well, there's Amanita muscaria, and it's also called fly agaric uh, mushroom. It goes by many names. Yeah. Okay. I was wondering if fly agaric and Amanita were two different mushrooms. They're the same mushroom. Yeah, that's the same. Two names for the same, uh, uh, the same one. Where, well, like, where were you when you took those? 
Like in America? At home in California. So yeah, because again, th- they're not illegal. So I could order them from. I oh. actually had a friend with a farm who collected them himself up in, um, up in I think Washington. Uh, is a good place. Oh, that's crazy. Cause I used them. to go to Oregon, right, for the Cubenzies. Yeah. Um, right, Washington's right above Oregon, right? Right, but this one isn't <laughs> as well known because uh, you know you're not. You know, if you believe you're dying and you you want a quiet place to say goodbye to everything you've ever known, <laughs> it's not exactly made for the party. Yeah, yeah, that's you know, it's not. You're not gonna. It, it's 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 a journey of on your own, right? Like to go through death is your own experience. So you want to do it in the quiet darkness, I think, of the midwinter. That's oh, mad, man. That's like a dog. When dogs Be reborn when like dying, the year. They usually, they usually try to find a place to die by themselves. Well, it sounds dark, but the, the miracle of it was that I didn't die. Huh. And, that I, and the next day when I woke up, I was so grateful to be alive. Did you in feel, a way that I had never been before. And would you feel that it's a good way to, pre- to prepare you for death? Or to make you well, accept I think that would be presumptuous of me because I don't know what real death is like. You know, I know this experience. And to me, I, I, you know, I in my thought process, in my mind, it felt like I was dying. But but is is it the full letting go of of real death? It's it's hard to say, but I hope so. What does it feel like to feel like you're dying? Well, at a certain point, you know, you've, you've tried your best. You've tried to stay alive. You've, you know, you've managed your body, you've managed your health, you've done everything the best you can, you're bleeding, but you tape it up, right? You, whatever, whatever's going on. But there's a certain point where your body is just dying and it's past the point of no return. So it's like a psychedelic subconscious transformation in your mind going into death. I had this feeling that I was dying, like this deep certainty. And oh. so from that, I thought, well, I, I felt that... I, I ran through all the memories and all the events of my life and experienced it all like in that in that time, you know, and, re- and sort of scrolled through like they call life review or something. Right? So I scrolled through all my memories and my oh, whole like life. Oh, like your life flashes before your eyes. Yeah, but in a, in a flash of like dream time. So it, it felt like hours because I'm going through like huh. years and years of experience and all the people I've known and all the moments I've had. And, and from that, I felt nothing but gratitude that out of nothing, this all this experience could appear to me this life with all the emotions and all the color and all the experience of it could just be there you know for free did you know before you took these that that was kind of the experience you would have uh i'd heard someone the, i've heard about this ego death concept oh, okay. and I, I knew that it was on the table but okay. it's still i don't think i was prepared because of that you know it didn't uh, it still was was a it was an experience, but I felt such gratitude, and I laid down, you know, and and yeah. and sort of like said goodbye and thank you to to all of life, like to everyone I'd ever known. To and and you sort of accept it's like you've been playing a game, and it's over. Sorry, I should I should let you guys jump in, what? but you're playing a no, game, you're fine. and it's over now, and and then there's no more moves, huh. so you're just sort of like you have to let it go, and you watch other people See? play on. But you're out of the game now. And so I felt like, oh, it's sort of disconnect from life and it's sort of receding off into the distance. That's a big part of dying that I don't want to. It's like. So you really like have to let go. Everyone's staying there and of, I'm dying and I'm going. I'm like. Yeah, like, and I'm letting go of everything. Like, not just the world out there, too. <laughs> but I'm letting go of Jeremy, too. Yeah. Right. And this, all this, my whole story, all my qualities and personality. Yeah. That's all whatever going, too. Whatever you were or whatever. Yeah, you yeah, were. all of it. Everything from life on earth is all fading into the darkness. And going away, like that. That that thought for me is like, mm-hmm. is it? Is it? I would say somewhat of a troubling thought because it's like when I think of death or anything like that, it's like I don't want to. Let's just say I don't want to be dying somewhere and have all my family and friends around me looking at me, because I'd be like, "Fuck you guys! You get to live, continue on this life sure. that I love, and I'm gonna die. I'm not gonna be here." But the other what? side is, you got to live. You got to live, and, and, and that's all that anyone gets. I mean, maybe over time I could accept that a bit more. But it's yeah. like, I don't, I well, love being alive. I love being alive. I accept death. But the thing is, it's like, give me another 50 years at least. Right. Let me enjoy life for another 50 years. If I look back on my life today, if someone told me tomorrow, you're going to die tomorrow, look back on your life today and come to a conclusion at the end of the day, whether you're happy with the life you've lived or not. 
I would say 100% I am. I'm satisfied with the life I've lived already, but I still don't want to fucking die yet. <laughs> sure. Hey, you know, I can say peace dying. When I woke up hours later and I was alive, that was that was the most joyful part of the whole thing because I I was al- I was so glad to be alive, so glad that I hadn't died, that I was still in the game and still able to live and and make the most of the time that I have for whatever that means to me personally. I guess I'm sort of an existentialist like that. Um, I don't know what the best way to live life is, but I know that each one of us is trying to make that happen for ourselves. Definitely, definitely. So anyway, yeah, Amanita, quite an adventure. Quiet place is good, you know, and and if you've meditated on death or considered it before that moment, I'm sure it would help. But the other thing (laughs) is that, you know, there is other effects of of the Amanita, which I think in low doses are more what you'd be looking for around the holidays. So <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, let's get... Yeah, so you don't have to go... Christmas here. You know, you don't have to go heroic dose and, like, right. die. You right. know, you you, <laughs> you could take less yeah. and yeah. just be very, very relaxed. Yeah, very relaxed in your body, body and mind. Yeah. And I felt like my thoughts were less pressing. You know, I could yeah. really hang out with people because my own thoughts are like, yeah, sure, but I'll, I'll speak to you if I care enough, you know? Yeah. Um, but I also just could enjoy everything that's happening, be very comfortable, you know, pain and, and muscle aches and all that stuff. So the bottom line, what you're saying is basically is that we're going to release a mushroom, the Amanita mushroom product, Patty and the Yank, and we're going to sell it around Christmas time. And it's going to be a staple of Christmas, just like having a Christmas tree, just like getting presents, just like drinking nog, eggnog, whatever the fuck that is. All right. Well, that's what we're going to do. We can talk about um, different ways to do that. But I'm you couldn't sell microphone, you, you couldn't quack. sell anything for human consumption, so you'd have to say it's decorative or it's something else. But you just did, so now we're fucked. So forget about it. There was there was this problem we had in Ireland going back just before I moved to Canada in 2011, and there was these pills coming from China, right? They opened up these shops in Ireland called head shops, and in a head shop you could buy paraphernalia like a bong, like skins, like all this kind of stuff, and you could also buy synthetic marijuana synthetic ecstasy synthetic cocaine and all this now a lot of people were fucking dropping dead from taking these synthetic ecstasies so of course i took them <laughs> so long story short i was with, give it a go i was with like i think in one week like eight people died in ireland from taking oh, these things yeah and on the back of the packet it said not for human consumption plant food but everybody knew that, they were, that you would take them and they would get you really fucked up it's at just, night. that was a trick so they could sell them that's so they could right. sell them you had no idea where these things were coming so from so any kind of amanitas that you buy now from a you know retailer will say not for human consumption too there you go so on the note of that I took two of these pills this one night with somebody in an apartment in, in, in Ireland this ties right in what you're saying about thinking you're going to die and long story short I got extremely high like, like I was wired off ecstasy or MDMA or whatever like that and um, I was like okay fuck this I'm going to go in and try to go to bed and um, when I went to try and go to bed, my, my health just deteriorated. I felt all the life go out of my body. I felt, oh my God, what the fuck's going, what's wrong with me? I could barely move. So I got up out of the bed and I was like rubbing my face. I was like, I felt, I'd never felt like that before in my life. So I ran out of my room and I banged on the other person's door. I won't name them or anything about them. And I was like, get up, get up. I'm, there's something wrong with me. I'm, there's something really not right with me. And they get up and they're like, what the fuck's wrong? And they're like, you don't look well. I went into the bathroom and I couldn't even see my fucking face. Like my eyes were completely like black, dil- dilated. I was trying to throw water on my on my face, and I was like thrown up into this fucking sink, thrown up into the garbage bin. And this person wow. had their phone out to call the ambulance, and I was like, "Don't!" I said, "Keep keep it ready, but don't call the ambulance unless I hit the deck." Meaning like if I pass out. And yeah, I yeah. If stupid, you go down, then, then you, you dial. How yeah. stupid <laughs> we were back then. It's like. Like, people are dropping dead from these things. I'm like, don't you dare call for help until I die. <laughs> Once I'm dead, then you can call. Maybe they can revive me and bring me back. But that was the scary, scary, scary experience. Going right to the edge. I couldn't sit down. I couldn't stand up. I didn't know where to put myself. I kept throwing up. I was wi- I never felt like that my entire life. Right. All air- the life went out of my body. Like, I couldn't even close my hands. Well, that sounds terrifying. It was horrible. So it's like what you were saying earlier about the death. I was wondering, did you know that you might experience that before you took the mushrooms? Because I... I an inkling that something might happen with these books. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess I, I thought about it. And and in the back of my mind, I had this thing like, well, it's possible that it's lethal, you know. <laughs> <laughs> had, had you, had you like, you're telling us now, like, it almost sounds like this is a sp- specific purpose of this mushroom. Like, uh, it's a common experience among people who take it. That Absolutely. You, so did you know that? Because now I know that because you just told me, right? But did you know yeah, what I now know? Um. 
Oh. Right. I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to think back. <laughs> you know, I read as much as I could, and that's when I learned most about this uh, this topic was before I ever took it. You know, I, I kind mm-hmm. of went pretty exhaustive on that. So yeah, I knew it was part of it, and I knew that was um, you know, and that was a part of the the symbolism of it too. That that it was you know this death and rebirth experience. It was a symbol of death and rebirth. Like, uh, well, symbols of death and rebirth could be references to the Amanita. So this is where, like, the theory comes from. Uh, I guess in the 20th century, first guy to talk about it was a guy named John Allegra, who worked on the Dead Sea Scrolls translation oh. committee. Right, and he was the only guy on the team who wasn't a Catholic priest. Right, he was just a university professor, linguist. You know, master translator. So, could we say he was the only person on the team who didn't fiddle with little boys? Sorry, what was that, Yank? Yeah, you know, one suspects. <laughs> one suspects. Dead Sea Scrolls. Elaborate on those. So he went into there. There is a cache of old documents, including uh, you know, copies of a lot of like books we're familiar with from the Christian New Testament, uh, but different versions and and different. Uh, Th- texts in different languages and things like that. So he was a s- part of this small team uh, working on translating these these scrolls, and he came to the conclusion that Jesus Christ was a symbol for this Amanita mushroom. Whoa. And so he wrote a book called The Mushroom and the Cross, where he uh-huh. lays out his theory, mostly based on linguistics and words from the Bible, that why it's a code. Uh, but then, having gone through it myself, I think okay, that's where the Jesus thing makes sense. He says, "If you if you take me, you you know you won't you won't die. You will have eternal life." And like that's what you need to hear if you're going in to take something that makes you feel like you're going to die. You guys shouldn't should you should know that you're not really going to die, right? You don't so you don't need to freak out, yeah. right? Or at least at least you've been told you might forget it in that moment, but you've been told that. Wait, this is what he was talking about. I'm, I think I'm going to die, but I'm not. I'm going to be okay. I'm going to have eternal life, maybe, whatever that is. Both in just the normal conscious aspect and specifically when you're on the Amanita mushroom. Right. Right? That is also like a lot of people freak out because they're going to die. But with this idea of Jesus in the Bible, don't worry, you're not going to die. Yeah. And then when you're on the Amanita mushroom, right? Yeah. You're not going to die. No, you feel like you're, you're, you're die, on the, you're you on don't the cross, die. right? You you're experiencing death, and you're, you know, you're yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's your moment. And so the experience. That's what you were saying earlier. Sorry, yeah. I now understand the experience on the Amanita mushroom is a metaphor for real life and death, and, and the Bible, and maybe right? a possible origin for the Christian religion would be you know. So Allegra thought that the Christian sacrament was a brew made from Amanita mushroom and then a bread made from it because you can grow the mycelium on, on barley so they could make uh, crackers. All the Christians have just turned off now. <laughs> well, it's too bad. Even it's, leaving hate mail on the patio. It's, it's too bad because they might still be getting some now. But er- ergot grows on bread too, right? And it that's can. what led to the Salem witch trials. Right. Yeah. Ergot yeah, ergot's so maybe that ergot. I think bread ergot's was... more unpredictable, right? Like that's one of the one of the you know, ergot classic, in itself or LSD. Classic maneuvers. Well, ergot's like L S D in that you get a lot of different reactions from everybody. You know, like somebody's having a great time, somebody's dancing, somebody's crying, somebody just saw the world open up into skulls. You know, you get all you get the spread. Right? It's like Datura or something, you know, you're going to get like wild reactions, all different things. So you have to tell the, the congregation that there's spirits and good and evil like things fucking with the ceremony or something so that you can explain it. Huh. What is ergot? Ergot is a kind of uh, parasitic fungus that grows on certain grains and it can contaminate them with a psychoactive compound that is, is very toxic and, and will, can kill you in insufficient dosage. But in small doses, it makes you trip out. That was a, what? Again, as humans, we're so mental. If you eat too much of this, it probably will kill you in a horrible way. But if you eat just enough, you're going to trip out and have a great time. But that's then. always the game, right? So, so in the forest, let's say that there's some grapes growing on a vine, you know, somewhere strung on a tree, and some of them go rotten. And most of the animals that go and, and eat the rotten grapes have started to ferment a little bit. They have some alcohol in them. Most of the animals that eat. Um, those things, they just pass out, right? Their liver can't handle it. They pass out. They go into toxic shit. They, you know, they sleep it off, and that's it. There's only two uh, animals that will just go and, and eat the grapes and get fucked up, but not pass out. Right? We can ride the edge, and that's humans and deer. Huh. 
So deer can handle a little bit of alcohol and, and, and apparently the, the mushrooms and all that. And not only, they really enjoy it. So they dig up the amanitas, you know, they, they really like them, right? Because again, like if you don't get the heroic dose, then you're probably just going to feel good and very, very calm and, and, and nice in your body, you know, and things, food tastes good and, you know, it's, it's this very sensory experience. It's crazy. Very yeah. nice. Most, if not all drugs, except crack, are great in small doses and terrible and potentially terrible in huge doses. I like the Amanita in that, you know, the worst you're going to get is probably still something nice where, you, you know, you get to face death in a very relaxing way. Uh, I can't think. That's funny because they use DMT for terminal patients. I know that. They use DMT to help people come to terms Oh shit! There's uh, as Patty just said. There's nothing easy. There's nothing harder to deal with than your death, right? And I think that's one it. Of kind the- of encompasses everything, right? All of our hopes and dreams are there. All of our regrets. Everything. You know, everything it's the is all there. All encompassing everything. And death. and yeah, letting go is probably the biggest challenge. So, yeah, not for the faint of heart, but but worth practicing because aren't we all destined to die someday and and face that? A hundred percent. And that's the thing is that there's a full stop at the end of everybody's name. And a lot of people don't take the time in their day to think about that. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like you're going to die someday and everybody around you is going to die too. Yeah. So why are you taking life so seriously? Why are you getting stressed out about all these things? You know. Getting stressed out about the things that don't, that don't seem matter. significant and, and not getting stressed out enough about the things that really do matter. Yeah. It's... Right? And getting our priorities all tangled It's like up. it's the... In order to live, you have to die. I remember <laughs> it all the time, and it allows me to put things in perspective. You know, if there's yeah. some some issue with my boss at work, some feeling yeah. there, and I just think, well, you know, what if I was dead tomorrow? <laughs> how would I? How much would I care about this? Would I be insulted? Would I get? Would, would I even give a shit? Well, you'd be dead, wouldn't you? Yeah, and, and or if they die, right? Yeah. Then then our problem would seem small and and not worth too much worry. But yeah, it's hard right? to see it past gives all you that. The perspective. Hard, yeah, exactly. That's a good way of thinking. I think. And then yeah, I, if they died, you'd feel guilty for even being mad about it, wouldn't you? Ex- you would. That's what I mean. Yeah, exactly. You you'd feel like, oh, I was so silly to 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 carry this, like when it doesn't even matter next to death. Okay, that's pretty interesting because like I often think about my death. Um, I try to every day. Like if I don't wake up tomorrow morning, am I okay with how I live today and all the days prior to today? But I don't often think about if other people died. Like if Patty here died. Or my girlfriend died. Uh, for Would me, I be like, okay with that? It's like Dia That's de los Muertos. You know, we're all skeletons. We're all dying, man. Like, so everything is precious. Your your life, what you do, your decisions are precious, but also everyone else's and, and our experience with each other and the time we have together. I mean, that's really all we have. That is all we have is time. And if you think about it, that timer starts the moment that you're, you're before you're even born. You're born to die. You're actually, you're actually... How would you even say it? You're born to die before you're even born. Right. <laughs> That's know? a good song, isn't that? Lana it's, Del Rey? It's, the, I think. it's life and death, right? That they're they're yeah. like you can't have light without darkness, yeah. without yeah. the contrast. Yeah. That's it. Right? You can't have pleasure without so pain. So if, if we want to occur in time and have events that have significance and you know everything is it matters a lot, yeah. then we have to die. We have to have a life and a beginning and an end yeah. of something. It doesn't mean that that's the real end. You know, I died in Amanita and then life went on too. So that could be what happens to us when we die. That's like such a special gift because you get like a sneak peek, which like you said earlier, gives you more gratitude for the time you have while you're actually alive. It's like, oh, I exper- experienced like the end, but it's not the end yet. So it's like I got a free second chance at everything. Yeah. With everyone I've known and I looked at my parents and my friends and That's and so crazy everything. that you reviewed all that because I've done ayahuasca and ibogaine and DMT, but I've never gone through like a vivid review, like flash before flash of my life before my eyes thing. Yeah. Sounds like that's what Amanita is able to give you. Yeah. And I've done it a few times and I only had that profound experience one time. Uh, so I, I think that's it's it's like it, it doesn't always happen. Even you got good mushrooms and you made a big brew with a lot of them. Um, you did everything right. You didn't have any carbonated beverages all day. And that's a thing. That's a thing. That's part of it. Um, People are listening to this now, going a Christmas special. Well, he is. didn't say ho 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 once. Or well, bells. Santa's gonna ho 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 when he drops the bag of mushrooms down the chimney. <laughs> right. And he Bring drops back. them there because you're gonna hang them in stockings by the fire to dry. Oh, man, here we go. 
right? So, because oh, you got to dry them out for the ibotenic acid to convert to what you want, which is muscimol. So ibotenic muscimol. acid makes you feel sick and and pee a lot and sometimes even throw up, and your body can process it into muscimol. So it goes out as muscimol in your pee, and there's also some amount of muscimol in the fre- in the mushroom. But so drying takes you part of the way there. So hold on, I'm sorry. So uh, we can drink reindeer pee and get high. Does that mean we could also eat these mushrooms and drink our own pee and get high? That's the real game. And that's why Jesus says, "He who hasn't dr- drank and drunk again hasn't really drunk." Right. So you're in order to get the maximum experience, then you you drink the pee. Uh, that comes from that, and it, it it's like you already had the rough, the worst part, and that's filtered out, and now you just get the good part. Whoa. And and you would that's fast bad. all day, so you're not peeing out like asparagus juice or something, right? You're just you're just peeing out this, um, and and it changes to a different color, and it smells like a different than normal pee, and it's like wow, it's a, it's a holiday beverage. It's a beverage. So and, and who that's knew? what I said earlier. That's what I said who earlier. Who knew, man? We're gonna I brand didn't know. This shit. We're going to brand this we shit. Re- Patty we, and the Yanks. We really fucked up this Christmas, didn't well, we? It's like all those little... Okay, you ever see those little fountains that they have all over Europe and other European influence places? They have little fountains with like a cherub or an angel pissing yeah. into the fountain. Yeah. Why are they pissing into something? And how does that relate to a party? Whoa. That's right, they're point, pissing because they're taking the amanita. They're pissing it out. They're angels because they take the hit for us. They they do the like the shaman there. They do the uncomfortable part in their body and then pee out the clean version. And then people, so people would pay in Siberian countries to get that mushroom shaman pee because that's like the best <laughs> mushroom shaman pee. I think that's the name of this next episode. No yeah, yeah, yeah. Way. Oh yeah. What no the hell? You and if you're not doing that, shaman. okay, but you also have your dried mushrooms and then you're going to prepare them so you soak them in water for some time for hours. And then it makes this this golden brown uh, brew, smells kind of like honey and and rich savory kind of notes. Uh, it's very pleasant to drink. Very nice. I warmed it wait, up. Wait, wait. The pee? No, the the brew from the mushroom. Okay. Oh, so you don't you didn't actually eat the mushroom. I've done that them? too. You can eat them. Both. It's a, okay. it's a dry, dense mushroom, so you'd want to you'd take a little piece and like let it soak in your mouth for a while and just suck on it till it falls apart. So you're like a hard candy or so something. You're saying that Okay, let me break this down for the listeners. So the Christmas tree, anybody that's listening now at home and has a Christmas tree up and has presents underneath that tree. That essentially originated from a pine tree in the wild that had mushrooms growing underneath it that a reindeer found and ate and then pissed out those mushrooms he just ate and then the man that was following the reindeer, the human, humanoid, the whatever you want to call him, homo sapien, he then drank that pee and got high. And this is all, then he's like, fucking hell, this is amazing. So each winter he would go around to people's houses and bring them these packages of mushrooms, right. like Santa Claus. And then they, to dry these mushrooms, they would hang them in stockings above the fire. Like people hang their stockings above the fire at Christmas and get little gifts in them. Exactly. This is insane. Exactly. All good, I love it. All good <laughs> things in modern culture. Origi- oh, good things and some bad things, right? Like, well, I only say that in assuming the Bible's a bad thing. Um, but a lot of that was inspired by psychedelics, right? Did it, we, it would seem so. It would seem so. Either That's the only way by, it would make sense. I mean, there's some relationship there. It, 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 I don't know if they're inspired by or if they're intent to like cover it up or make some kind of a dualistic text where if you don't know the code, then you don't understand and you view it one way. And if you have the experience, and you know what they're talking about, then you see the whole story differently. Like a, like a, something that, like a puzzle that looks different depending on the angle. Huh. And then, I mean, oh, okay, it was Coca-Cola then that took Santa Claus and put him in the red suit with the white beard and all that kind of shit. It was Coca-Cola, I believe, that done that. But Saint Nick or Nicholas was actually a real person or something, wasn't he? Or Well, if any of the saints are real people, right? Yeah, a historical person who got up to some antics uh, giving out gifts or something. I'm not as familiar um, yeah, okay. with Saint I, I'm Nick. I'm not either, but uh, I think then Coca-Cola took it and commercialized it like they do. No offense to the two Americans that I'm sitting beside here. But you I gotta, don't you guys take any offense to the obvious fact that Coca-Cola commercialized everything they touched. <laughs> yeah, you've de- demystified, debugged. I'm not sure which word is right. Many of the things surrounding Christmas so far, right? The presents, the tree, the stockings, Santa, the reindeer. Santa's outfit is red and white like the mushroom, which is festive. Oh, that's, right. that, so there you go. That's the answer to your question. It's red and the white. The red and white. It's a red mushroom red with a little white mushroom. the white kind of fringe. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. They took that as well. What else did they take? What else did they do Christmas? So how did... Okay, so if all that's true... Um, oh, yeah, and also milk and cookies. Does that play any part here? Uh, I think that's a distinctly modern yeah, 20th okay, century that makes twist. Sense. Because they didn't even have cookies back then, right? <laughs> Hey. Cookies in Siberia? They didn't, they didn't need that psychedelic reindeer pee. Right. Was it actually mushrooms and like, uh, you know what I mean? Was it actually <laughs> mushrooms and reindeer pee, not milk and cookies? Milk and cookies is a pretty damn good snack, especially in a cold night. And it would be safe to have that while you're taking Amanita. Right, that wouldn't, but you wouldn't have beer. Okay, you wouldn't have beer because that would interact with the ibotenic acid and make you <laughs> sick, and you might throw up. So I want to ask you guys because you're both American. And I'm Irish, so we come from different places, right? Come from different worlds. Although we're the three of us are currently living in Taiwan, what is something we're we've, also in the same world? We've, we've just we are all well, in the it's same a world. Different, well, different sense of well, world, right? Physically, mentally, I don't know about. I want to hear your question. Let's get okay. Let's so, get it. so uh, I got two Yanks sitting here beside me. I'm an Irish man, and uh, we've just described or talked about some of the traditions of Christmas, like the presents under the tree, putting a tree up in your house, stockings, all this kind of stuff, Santa Claus. And um, what are things that you guys do in America that's traditional for Christmas? Like you guys eat turkey for dinner. Like what do you do that's when I think of about Christmas in Ireland, there's certain things I would think about that would instantly make me think, Oh, that's Christmas in Ireland. What's something that you would feel is oh that's Christmas in America. That's uniquely Christmas for me in America. I think it's probably kind of a personal question because a lot of families do different things. For me, it would be... What, st- what state are you from? California. Okay. So California it would, might be not very cold at Christmas. There's definitely no snow. It probably hasn't been snow in, in 30 years. So we'd all be wearing Christmas sweaters and things, trying to make a go of it and sweating. <laughs> just, just sweating, trying to pretend like it's cold. Like, Mom, uh, I'm fucking... 35 degrees, I don't care. You put that Christmas shirt on right now, yeah. Johnny. No, we'd all, we'd all be doing it, sort of trying to pretend <laughs> to enjoy it. Uh, my mom would make a lot of baked goods, and so we'd have a lot of cookies and yeah. snacks and stuff. And normally she didn't do much of that, so that was definitely special when suddenly there's there's like six kinds of cookies instead of one w- once every few months. Yeah. Um, and she would have, yeah, some kind of traditional meal, um, I think... Not a turkey, because we would have just had that for Thanksgiving. So my mom would do a ham, or maybe like a like a game hen, or something. Uh, she, you know, she would come up with some kind of festive a roast, maybe, yeah. la- lamb roast yeah. or something. You know, she'd come up with something that was a showcase meal. Okay. We'd go to church, okay. <laughs> definitely. And, I was and, forced and, to do that as a child, but no longer partake. But mostly what I think about is lustily desiring presents for ye- for months before Christmas as a kid, you know, and thinking about which presents I want and looking at all the commercials on yeah, TV yeah. and, like, basing my mind on this advertising input and all the bullshit and all the disappointing presents I got. <laughs> <laughs> right, that didn't that didn't fit at all. What you know? Got the moon shoes? You're gonna jump over somebody? No, you you, you get like less high off the ground than you do just jumping. That's interesting. It's all a big joke. In the book, the Tao of Pooh, one of the chapters is about how we we uh, every day we look at the presents. And we're like, oh, I can't wait. Oh, I can't wait. Oh, I can't wait. Oh, I can't wait. And then you finally open them, and they're never as good as you thought they were gonna be. Always. Yeah. Always. Yeah. Like most goals in life. <laughs> I love how you always bring it to such a happy fucking... Well, because in the in the beginning, it's the goal that drives us to start the behavior. But if you, if, if you continue doing it, you start to realize it's not the end goal that was the goal. The goal was to turn it into a consistent process, a practice. The end, the end, not the end goal in life, but the end of life is, is death, right? Right. So you don't, you don't build up to... To death, really. Well, I don't know anybody that's looking forward to dying. That's what I mean. Well, you look forward to opening Christmas presents. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess it's something about, you know, our, our expectations don't match reality, right? We're expecting something more than or different than what we get. Well, when we were younger, as yeah. kids growing up in Ireland, it was told to us and taught to us in schools and everywhere that Santa Claus, Saint Nick, good old Saint Nick was always watching you, right? So it was this guy that was always watching you. And as a kid, you believed this, right? They had these charming songs like "You Better Watch Out." Yeah, you better watch. You better out. not cry. You better like, watch out for what? Like, Whoa. when am I gonna cry? It sounds so yeah. abusive. You know, yeah, it's yeah. like, like, don't you better not cry because Santa's pout. coming to town. You better not pout. I'm telling <laughs> like, you, what Santa got a belt on the yeah. back of it? Yeah, you know, what's what's Santa doing here? So, so I don't like get, Santa. So we get told this right about Santa. <laughs> Santa's always watching it, and he puts you on a list. He put he makes a list, a naughty or nice list, right? And if you're on the naughty list, you know what you get. 
you get a lump of coal in your stocking, right, that hangs above the fireplace. Now, in Ireland at the moment, we have a big housing crisis and the price of fuel has gone through the fucking roof. So I imagine that a lot of parents in Ireland are like, Timmy, just be a bad fucking cunt today, will you? Just be a bad boy. We need coal this year for our fucking fire and it's too expensive. So every kid in Ireland is hoping to get coal in their stocking this year. But they ain't going to get it because the price of coal has gone up to 19 euro a bag. Fuck you, Ireland, and fuck the government too. But that's uh, about about the song. That was that was really interesting. So I was just we just sang "Joy to the World" yesterday at my Christmas show with my babies. It was okay. It was very exhausting. It's the Lord is come. Oh, I know. It's a rousing I, anthem. You know? I I, re- I refuse to teach it. But what if it's the um, Amanita has come? Yeah, that's see if you if you recontextualize that stuff, then we can have a different relationship with what do you with what do you uh, songs and with a lot of even the texts of Christianity. But with the lyrics to the song, it reminds me of Jenny Greenteeth in our episode on mythical creatures and why did we even create mythical creatures in the first place? It was to get people to behave. Jenny Greenteeth was to keep kids from playing in the river. So now we've taken this beautiful Amanita Siberian practice with mushroom shamans, and we want to drink their pee, and turned it into them making kids be good, right? Which is almost like a Christian creation. Yeah, I like the way you're taking that around there, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, that's fucking, yeah. Yeah. They got this Santa Claus watching you. They it's... took a beautiful thing. They took a beautiful, they took a shaman and turned him into a mythical creature. To ins- yeah. But isn't Christmas supposed to be the celebration of the birth of Christ? Isn't that what it's supposed to be? Isn't that what the t- why, like right? We got the story about the Amanita. And, and Christ is and is the eternal, right? Christ is the eternal child, like that that part of you that passes beyond death and lives on. The the part of your part of your totality, some portion of that, goes beyond death and lev- lives on and continues. And so that's Christ. So if you go through that that death and rebirth experience, then you are Christ reborn the next day. So I had this, the first 10 minutes when I woke up, I had no idea about anything. I, I, I looked around the room. I didn't know that it was a room. I didn't know that objects, what they were, like what a book was or what a table was. I had no words for anything. I was just in total confusion uh, for maybe five, 10 minutes. And then it slowly started to come back like, oh yeah, I'm a human being on earth. This is a house. I'm, you know, and all the pieces and sort like of... like a dead body and you the left, you were, you've got the knife in your hand, there's blood everywhere. It's like, oh shit, what did I do? Yeah, it, yeah. Could, it could have been and I would have spent just as long as in total like, <laughs> is what's a, what is that? Is that, you know, I, I wouldn't know it's a human being or, you know, I would have no... You know what? No comprehension. They never told us anything about these Anamita mushrooms in, in school when I was going to school or that like, you know, came from Siberian reindeer well, it seems like something that has been intentionally you know repressed or taken out it's a much better story that the, maybe the christian church in the early days was serving mushroom brew and little mushroom lace crackers for a nice a nice feel good uh you know closeness to god kind of feeling when you go to church and then they people you know the amanita can live in a lot of different things so if you have wooden cups then the amanita mushroom will start growing on the inside of the cup and then you can pour like grape juice in there and it will change into mushroom wine from the Amanita that's growing on your cup. So then the Christian church in the early days, people brought their own wooden cups for communion. And then slowly the Catholic church banned that and switched to all metal for all their gear and for everything they serve in, which would then not allow the Amanita to grow on it. So you couldn't ha- get your own home culture and like skip church. <laughs> Was, is there archaeological evidence of these wooden cups with remains this, of it's, that? Yeah, it's an old thing, like going back to Neolithic European uh, hunter-gatherers where they're buried with just like a cloak and a leather pouch and a knife, and then they have their cup, wow. um, which, which which shows evidence of some kind of like mycelial growth wow. on the inside. How crazy so they, it was so precious to them that they would they would keep it. It's like your magic chalice, right? Like a, the wizard has some special cup and... You know, there's a Taoist story from China about a man who goes to visit a, a Taoist hermit up on the mountain, and the guy, and he asks, you know, if he has any wine, and the hermit says, "Oh no, just give me a moment," you know, and he takes his cup and he uses his little chicken to, to fill it up, and then the guy says, "Oh yeah," and he had the most marvelous wine, and they had they had a really interesting night, but the guy probably just peed in the cup. <laughs> <laughs> what? Right, because if you're, you know, you're you're, you're, you're eating the amanita, right? You you dried them out, you put them in water, you drank the water, or you you let it grow on barley and you ate the barley, whatever you did, right? And then and then you're gonna pee it out, and if, if you want to keep the party going, 
or keep the dose going, then you could just keep drinking that pee. So it, it'll stay like 90%. Psychedelic 90% of it, it just goes through you and comes out your pee like 90% um, each time. So you can get most of it and just reuse it with no loss in quality. The rise in psychedelic pee parties has been... <laughs> but didn't you say that the pee is even better, right? Because all the stuff that will yeah, make all you the sick is Yeah, acid is out, and so it's just muscamol. Yeah, so if the person, you know, if they fasted and their their body, their pee is like really clean and all they're, all you're getting is like clean water and Amanita stuff, then uh, yeah, that would, Down. Be, that would be the jam. Patty, would you drink my pee? If it had Amanita, Amanita magic mushroom in it, maybe I don't know. But I will say that if if you I'll just take it myself and drink my own pee, if your mushroom, <laughs> if you have dry mushrooms, then you could probably just take them. And and we're you know we're we have enough money, we could buy enough. You wouldn't need to drink your pee to like have fun. If it was life or death, yeah. If you had no nothing else, if I was, if this I, is the only okay. way I can get high. Okay, if I was if I was if I was a glutton and I ate all the mushrooms, it's like too if bad it's guys. Life or so, sobriety <laughs> or. <laughs> all right, we're in a situation. I eat all the mushrooms. I'm like I'm sorry, guys, I'm an asshole. I ate all the mushrooms, knowing that the only way you guys can now get high is to drink my pee. Right. Would you do it? Sounds like a very Irish thing to do. It's <laughs> it's sobriety or death. Right, those are my options. Well, there you go. <laughs> yeah, well, on I the would. Top, I on, would. You would do it, yeah? Yank? What? Do you drink my psychedelic Siberian pee? I imagine you probably got some pretty good pee. I mean, you're very athletic. You it's eat sterile. Well. Yeah. It's naturally sterile. You it's don't, not, you don't, you know. I mean, my biggest concern would be STDs, and I already have all the ones you have, so <laughs> I don't have to worry about that. Counteract each other. <laughs> so on the topic of Christmas... Name your favorite Christmas movie off the bat. It's got to be Christmas Vacation. National Lampoons? Yeah. Okay. Yank, name your favorite Christmas movie of all time. I don't want to. It's really embarrassing. He said, just name it. No, more embarrassing than mine? I don't even know. Four Christmases with Vince Vaughn. He's fucking hilarious. I haven't seen it. Okay. <clears throat> Seeing as I'm the only man in the room here. and <laughs> you're, you're saying that after just... Yeah, I was going to say Die Hard. But um, Die Hard is a great Christmas movie. But if I was honest, probably my favorite Christmas movie of all time is A Christmas Story. Yeah, actually, that is the movie we watch every year on Christmas, guaranteed. It's fantastic. I think it holds up. You know, it, it's a genuinely funny movie, not just uh, you know yeah. a Christmas movie. Yeah, it is. It is. It's got a very good feel-good feeling to it. About little, what's his name again? Little, <laughs> little Jimmy. Little Johnny. <laughs> What's his name? Who's the guy who wants he wants to he wants to Ralphie. Ralphie. Oh. Ralphie. Ralph, little Ralphie. Little yeah, he Ralphie. wants he wants the he wants the BB gun. Oh, you shoot your eye out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then he shoots his eye out. I got my sister gave me a leg lamp when I was in college. Uh, just, I was just about to talk about the yeah, leg lamp. The so leg explain lamp. the leg lamp to anybody that's listening that's never seen a Christmas well, story. It, it should be strung up out in the back garden. I think one of the central sequences of the film. So the father, he's got some kind of notification, like oh, he's he's been he's got a major award. You know, he's some magazine yeah. or something. Send him this prize notification. So he he mails off to get the prize, and he gets this. He gets it delivered in a box, and it's very it's this big deal. All families gathered around, like, what could this be? Yeah. And they pull out this lamp that's just a you know, long, <laughs> like a mannequin wooden a woman's leg with lacy fishnet stockings yeah. on it and a heel. And then at the end, where the hip would be, is just a, a, like a little lamp sticking out with a lampshade. <laughs> Absolutely absurd. I went to uh, I went to Comic Con before in Canada, and they had those lamps for sale. And I was walking past, and I was like. Where do I know that lamp from? Why would I know that lamp? But yeah. I know that lamp from somebody. Somebody had that Somewhere. in their house, and someone was with me. They're like, "That's from the fucking movie A Christmas Story." I was like, "What?" I don't really remember that. Yeah. I don't. Know. I just keep. Th- I, the window. I oh yeah, because it's an ama- it's a major award. <laughs> yeah, course, it's a major award. So he's uh, and he he's like he treats it with such reverence. He's like, "This is the major award. Like this lamp, it's beautiful." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the whole family's like, "What the fuck is this?" The the mother's just thinking how she can get rid of this thing, right? Because it's so hideous. <laughs> So, um, what do you want for Christmas this year, Patty? What do I want for Christmas? Um, nothing. Just, just to be happy. I had a feeling that'd be your answer. But what if we took it and like applied? I know our lights are on meth today. <laughs> um, what if we took it and like applied like a more philosophical question? Like, what do you want to change, or what do you want to improve for Christmas? Give me the mic. <laughs> well, it's funny you should ask me that question because I don't. For Christmas, that that doesn't matter. At New Year's every year, I think to myself, 
I look back on my year beforehand. I don't do it in public or in front of people and go, I'm writing a diary this year about all the things I want to change about my life. I don't do shit like that. I just think in my head to myself, did I have a good year last year? Is there anything I could do better next year? Is there any goals I want to achieve? Is there anything like that? I think about it and then usually after thinking about it, 10 minutes later, I forgot about what I was thinking about and then that's it. <laughs> there you go. The intention I, is there for a, for a split second, but I'm not I going think, to be like, I'm starting the gym in January and I'm going to get in shape. Yeah, fucking that's... January 2nd, they're fucking not even going to That's what I don't think is good, but I think that reflection is good. And with my, with, with my journal, I try to do it every day. You know, like kind of the same thing. Like, what did I do today? What did I not do well? What could I have done better? Blah, 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 blah. And try to change it tomorrow. But doing it for the whole year is good too. Well, you see, the thought the thought is always good. The intention can be good. But then the action or the follow through is what can lack. It's like somebody that preaches but doesn't practice. Like Hitler. Oh, well, he fucking practiced what he preached. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> fucking damn. Dan, he was like a puppet master. Master of puppets. You know what I mean? Um but yeah, there you go. I don't know. I don't want to fuck off for Christmas. I guess it's about walking the walk, right? So I hope yeah. that I, I guess I hope we can all walk the walk. That would be my Chris, exactly. Christmas wish. I and guess you know we're gonna make one. We we'll leave. Be a man of your word, or man, woman, they, them, she, he, it, whatever it is. Just be of your word. Yeah, and we're not politically correct on this podcast. <laughs> I'm not politically correct either. <laughs> so as I was saying, I would really like for Christmas to be heavyweight champion of the world, like for one more time. Awesome. Well, I think we're going to have a very Irish Christmas this year. Oh, is that what I... It was those bottles I heard? Yeah. Clinking. Well, uh, for us, Christmas is not today, but it's coming soon, and I, I have a feeling it's going to entail a lot of drinking, at least on Christmas Eve, but on Christmas Day, yeah. you are making me dinner, right? I don't know if I'm making you dinner, but somebody will be making, somebody will be making dinner. There's no pressure on me for dinner. That's cool though. I'm excited because I've been in Taiwan for eight years, and every year Christmas is just a it's a party where we just get fucking floored and fucked up. And I can't say it's it's fun, um, but it's not how I remember Christmas. It's not how Christmas was growing up for me. As well, it's yeah in Taiwan Christmas is not it's not part of the local culture. It's not a big holiday, so yeah. so we we just make it our own holiday here. In right, the, it's like a bunch expat of young... community, right? And, and like our the... you know we, we don't have families as much. Right. We're not as we're not as settled in. Yeah, we don't have a house. We're not going to cut down a tree. What we can do though is get smashed. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like a bunch of young kids think like this is what Christmas means to me. <laughs> Yeah, like, Let's I'm not rage. Even, I'm not really a drinker, anyways. I like the the odd drop of glass wine. The odd the odd drop of glass red wine. The odd <laughs> glass of red wine. My brain's gone. You're not as think as you drunk you are. Okay, <laughs> don't worry. What seems to be the officer problem? The, uh, you know what? Hold on. Um, no, I'm excited for this year because I know how much of a church boy you are, and on Saturday I'm having the wild party. And then you're having a nice Sunday Christmas dinner. It sounds very... And I know we're still going to drink, but it's going to be like pretty conservative and well-behaved. And that's cool. I haven't had that in Taiwan, I think, ever. Like a semi-well, a semi-well-behaved Christmas. I got to ask my question. Will there be communion? Will we take Holy Communion? Of course there will be. And there it will is. be mycelium <laughs> laced... What you call that mushroom you're talking about? I'm not drinking your piss I'm on Christmas. <laughs> oh, there's a new Christmas song. I'm not drinking your piss on Christmas. It could be a Mar- it could be a Mariah Carey hit. Why does it have to be so negative? Why oh. doesn't it be like I would consider All drinking your for- piss at Christmas? <laughs> All I want for Christmas is your piss. There we go. On that note, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to end that podcast here. We hope everybody has a great Christmas, a safe Christmas. Drink responsibly if you're going to drink at all. And uh, don't fucking drive when you're drunk either. Just fucking don't. All right? You hear me? Um, thanks a lot for coming into the studio today. My pleasure. Um, I've forgotten your name again. I was going to call you John. That's okay. It's still Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Jeremy. Thanks a lot for coming into the studio today. And we will definitely get you back in here again. That sure was uh, very informative. And... Uh, yeah, you've probably ruined a lot of people's Christmas because they're like, you told enhanced. Santa Claus. We've enhanced. You can still have your bullshit corporate right. Santa. Kids are walking down the stairs. going to bring you folded. products. You know, you can still get products if that's what you want. Mom's in the kitchen flipping her eggs and bacon and the kid comes down the, comes down the stairs with his arm folded. She's like, what's up, Timmy? I just listened to Paddy and the Yank. Uh, oh, really? What were they talking about? Christmas. The origins. Siberian reindeer pee that you never told me about. She's like, 
that you never gave me? Why didn't I ever get mushrooms for Christmas, Mommy? It's like, it's all I really wanted. It's like, Tom, he knows about it. But, but I don't know. He's been listening to Patty and the Yank again. I just want to talk to God for Christmas. You know, <laughs> that's what I want. So in the, also today, usually we have music at the end of the podcast um, from various artists around the world. As usual, I've dropped the ball and forgot to get music this week. So we're going to sing you a little Christmas song. No, we're not. No, we're not. Bye. Peace. Have a great <laughs> Christmas. Cheers. All right. Merry Christmas, everybody.